Now, as I've been saying all along, um, we will continue to use the, the model of biopsychosocial model at examining a lot of different aspects of our functioning. Um, and the biopsychosocial uh, plays, that model plays in here as well. Um, the biology aspect of it is, is found oftentimes in um, uh, hereditary uh, heredity, um, people's impact not only socially but also genetically, uh, being born to somebody who is an alcohol, um, who's alcohol dependent, uh, for example, uh, um, and this is not only the heredity, but also the um, environment as well, is that someone who's born and adopted into a family that is alcohol dependent, um, they are more susceptible to, you know, and that's really the, the impact of environment. But when somebody comes from uh, a family members who are alcohol dependent, uh, we're not clear, there's no real gene um, that is connected with um, alcohol. Uh, but at the same time, we see regular, uh, regularly high re accordance rates uh, between parents that are alcoholic and then kids that are alcoholic as well. Um, the a, a good example, which is even stated in your book, is the idea that kids that are at age six who are excitable and impulsive and fearless, which are genetic, are likely to be teens who are equally as adventurous when they, in terms of smoking, drinking, and using other drugs and so forth. So those each come into play when we're talking about the biological influences, but there is still this interaction between heredity and environment, and that doesn't... Uh, deny the the choice factor in terms of that but when we're talking about kids just like this suggests is that um, the peer group matters and because it does uh, they can influence for good or for bad either way and that's that's certainly the case when we're talking about um, uh, when we're talking about substance abuse and substance use the psychological um, aspects of that goes right along, psych and social, um, and that's also picks up on this particular um, uh, cartoon. Uh, the psychological factor comes into play. Remember what I mentioned before is that the social context has a direct impact on, on um, experience, experiencing drugs. Um, and, and uh, how that person is going to experience it. Um, the social context is part of that. The rate of drug reuse also really varies across uh, cultural gr groups, cultural groups and ethnic groups. Um, they, they vary as well. And uh, you can say that the context, again, the social context is an extremely powerful one when it comes to drug use. And that comes into play in, in heavy doses um, within uh, the impact. The one thing I will tell you, having worked with kids in a hospital setting, which usually includes um, uh, psych issues, depression, anxiety, et cetera, and um, uh, substance abuse issues, whether that's drugs uh, of whatever the class is we just looked at or alcohol, the, the peer group and that takes you back to some of the things that you've heard that are really rooted in some of the wisdom of the Proverbs is the peer group is the moving influence in kids. And if we can impact them, then we can also impact their behavior. And uh, behavior is part of it, what the actual outcome, but also perspective, uh, not necessarily emotions, but perspective about life. And this can be facilitated. And so some of you who might be interested in things uh, like Young Life, um, those kind of groups, whatever they are, Young Life or Campus Crusade or um, other uh, Christian-oriented groups on, on high school campuses, 
they impact this, which also impacts this, which also impacts this. And those are really key strategic components in terms of addressing the larger picture when it comes to drugs and alcohol from not only a biological point of view, but also from a psychological and sociological point of view um, and making differences. Information, and this is one thing I, I want to end with, is information is, is not enough. Um, we believe falsely, I think, that if we just provide the information, that's enough to change behavior, but it doesn't. And, and uh, because of that, <clears throat> because of that, then we feel like we're kind of off the hook, and society often looks at it that way, is that DARE, the Drug Abuse Resistance Education, is really about creating peer groups and also providing information. But the issue isn't information. The, inf the issue is more about perspective. And ultimately, when you really get right down to it, it's, it really is a matter of the heart and what goes on there that um, alcohol, drugs are connected to in terms of working with or um, changing or um, choosing. <laughs>